Beautiful. Thank you all. This morning, Paul and I are going to share with you a story from a book that you may not have heard of before. It's called The Acts of Paul and Thecla. It's a widely disseminated text from the early church, and we know this because we have many copies of it in various languages that date back to the first and second centuries. And these copies exist in Greek, Armenian, Syrian, Ethiopian, Coptic, which is Egyptian, and Latin languages. So this book was written and copied in all these different languages and exists today across the ancient world. The Acts of Paul and Thecla was used to encourage women in the early church to preach and to baptize. And so it wasn't included later on in the canon, which is now our Bible, because it became controversial later on as the Bible was being compiled and which books got um, chosen to be in the actual Bible. So here is an excerpt of the Acts of Paul and Thecla story that Paul and I will be reading for you. And we've split it up because it's a long reading, but it's so salacious and beautiful that we wanted to read quite a bit of it because we're pretty certain that most of you haven't heard it before and we want to share it with you. Okay. This is from this is from Acts of Paul and Thecla, book 2, verses 3, 7 through 10, and 15 through 21. And he saw Paul coming, a, a man of little stature, thin-haired upon the head, crooked in the legs, of good state of body, with eyebrows joining and nose hooked, full of grace. For sometimes he appeared like a man, and sometimes he had the face of an angel. And as Paul was saying these things in the midst of the assembly, the church, in the house of Osiphorus, a certain virgin named Thecla, whose mother was Theoclea, <clears throat> which was betrothed to a husband named Thamorus. Thecla sat at the window hard by, and she hearkened night and day unto the word concerning chastity, which was being spoken by Paul. And she stirred not from the window, but was led onward, or pressed onward, by faith, rejoicing exceedingly. And further, when she saw many women and virgins entering into Paul, she also desired earnestly to be accounted worthy to stand before Paul's faith, face and to hear the word of Christ. For she had not yet seen the appearance of Paul, but had only heard his speech. Now as she was removed, not from the window, her mother sent unto Tamaris, and he came with great joy as if he were all ready to take her to wife. Thamaris therefore said to Thecolea, uh, Theoclea, where is my Thecla? And Theoclea said, I have a new tale to tell thee, Thamaris, for three days and three nights. Thecla ariseth not from the window, neither to eat nor to drink, but looking earnestly as if it were upon a joyful spectacle, spectacle. She so attendeth to a stranger who teacheth deceitful and various words, that I marvel how the great modesty of the maiden is so hardly beset. O oh, Tamaris! This man upsetteth the whole city of the Iconians, and thy Thecla also. For all the women and the young men go into him and are taught by him. Ye must, saith he, fear one only God and live chastely. And my daughter too, like a spider at the window, bound by his words, is held by a new desire and a fearful passion, for she hangeth upon the things that he speaketh, and the maiden is captured. But go thou to her and speak to her, for she is betrothed unto thee. And Thamaris went to her, alike loving her, and fearing because of her disturbance, ecstasy, and said, Thecla, my betrothed, 
Why sittest thou thus? And what passion is thou holdest thee in amazement? Turn unto Thamorous, and be ashamed. And her mother also said the same, Thecla, why sittest thus thou, looking downward and answering nothing, but as one stricken? And they wept sore. Thamorous, because he failed of a wife, and Theoclea, because of a child, and the maidservants of a mistress, there was, therefore, great confusion of mourning in the house. And while all of this was so, Thecla turned not away, hmm. but paid heed to the speech of Paul. When Thamorous heard this of them, he was filled with envy and wrath, and he rose up early, and he went to the house of Onesiphorus with the rulers and the officials and the great crowd with staves, saying unto Paul, Thou hast destroyed the city of the Iconians and her that was espoused unto me, so that she will now not have me. Let us go unto Castilius, the governor. And all the multitude said, Away with the wizard, for he has corrupted our wives. And the multitude rose up together against him. And Thamorous, standing before the judgment seat, cried aloud and said, O proconsul, this is the man. We know not whence he is, who alloweth not maidens to marry. Let him declare before thee wherefore he teacheth, teacheth such things. And Demas and Hermogenes said to Thamorous, Say thou that he is a Christian, and so wilt thou destroy him? But the governor kept his mind steadfast, and he called Paul, saying unto him, Who art thou, and what teachest thou? For it is no light accusation that these bring upon thee. And Paul lifted up his voice and said, If I am this day examined what I teach, hearken, O proconsul, pro the living God, the God of vengeance, the jealous God, the God that hath need of nothing, but desirous the salvation of men hath sent me that I may sever them from corruption and uncleanness and all pleasure and death, that thou may sin no more. Wherefore God hath sent his own child, whom I preach and teach, that men should have hope in him, who alone hath had compassion upon the world that was in error, that men may no more be under judgment, but have faith, and the fear of God and the knowledge of sobriety and the love of truth. If then I teach the things that have been revealed unto me of God, what wrong do I do, O proconsul? And the governor, having heard that, commanded Paul to be bound and taken away to prison until he should have leisure to hear him more carefully. But Thecla, at night, took off her bracelets and gave them to the doorkeeper. And when the door was opened for her, she went into the prison and gave the jail, jailer a mirror of silver and so she went in to Paul and sat by his feet and heard the wonderful works of God. And Paul feared not at all, but walked in the confidence of God. And Thecla's faith, faith also was increased as she kissed his chains. Now when Thecla was sought by her own people and by Thamorous, she was looked for through the streets as one lost. And one of the fellow servants of the doorkeeper told that she went out by night. And they examined the doorkeeper, and he told them that she was gone to the stranger unto the prison. And they went as he told them, and they found her as it was bound with him in affection. And they went henceforth and gathered the multitude to them and showed that to the governor. And he commanded Paul to be brought to the judgment seat, but Thecla rolled herself upon the place where Paul taught when he sat in the prison. And the governor commanded her also to be brought to the judgment seat. And she went exulting with joy 
And was, when Paul was brought the second time, the people cried out more vehemently, He is a sorcerer. Away with him. But the governor heard Paul gladly concerning the holy works of Christ, and he took counsel, and he called Thecla, and he said, Why wilt thou not marry Thamrus according to the law of the Iconians? But she, looking earnestly upon Paul, and when she answered not, her mother Theoclia cried out, saying, Burn the lawless one, burn her that is no bride in the midst of the theater. Burn her that all the women which have been taught by this man may be affrighted. I just want to point out that was Thecla's mom who said burn her. And the governor was greatly moved, and he scourged Paul and sent him out of the city. But Thecla he condemned to be burned. So as Paul and I were talking about this text, we talked about the possibility of having you all participate in melodramatic style and having you boo and hiss and do all of those things throughout the story, and then we decided not to do that. I don't know if you wished you could have, but we talked about that possibility because it does lend itself to that, right? What would you think? It's kind of an amazing story. Well, that's just excerpts of this book, okay? There's much more. And yes, this is the Apostle Paul, the same one you hear about, and who wrote much of what we call the New Testament. So Thecla's story is one of those that was recorded on papyrus, much like the rest of the New Testament, and it was some time before 190 of the Common Era that this book was written. Over the centuries, Thecla became a, a saint in both the Roman Catholic Church and also the Eastern Church. Congregations have been named for her. There are stained glass um, pictures, depictions of her, and images of her are in all kinds of cathedrals in Europe and the Eastern world. There is a catacomb of St. Thecla in Rome, and this is Thecla's story as reco recorded in the Acts of Paul and Thecla, one of those ancient books that is not in our Bible. Now, I know that you heard Paul's description of a man of middling size with scant hair, crooked, ne uh, crooked legs, with knobby knees, uh, large eyes, and a unibrow. His nose is long, he's full of grace and mercy. Now, that's good. Yet at times he appeared like a man and other times like an angel. Wasn't that nice? But Thecla is known this way. She's a young, noble virgin. That's all we know about her physical sight. But she listens to the Apostle Paul's teaching, and she becomes one of his followers. That's it. That's what we know about her, right? So Thecla's mother and her fiancé, Tamaris, become concerned that Thecla would follow Paul's teaching to love God and to live in chastity, which, of course, the fiancé is not crazy about, right? So they take Paul to the governor, and the governor imprisons him. But Thecla, of course, bribes a guard to get into the prison, not because she's infatuated with Paul, but because she's infatuated with Paul's talk about God. And she sits at his feet all night listening to his teaching. And for this, Paul is sentenced to a whipping and expulsion from the area. But Thecla is sentenced to be killed by burning at the stake because she wants to know more about God. She's stripped naked and put on the fire, but is saved by a miraculous storm which God sent to put out the flames. Now again, later in the book, which we didn't read to you because you know we, we figure you don't wanna be here all day, Paul and Thecla meet up and they travel to Antioch. And there, as you might expect, the story continues with great detail. 
Thecla is then sentenced to be eaten by wild beasts because she wants to hear more about God and Jesus. And to be sure that she dies as a virgin, she's taken in by the queen in Antioch to be protected until her death sentence is carried out. Thecla was tied to a fierce lioness and paraded through the city naked. The lioness herself, along with the queen and the other women in the village, fought to save their shiro from the wild beasts. Even the lioness is on Thecla's side. So because God didn't allow her to be killed for the second time, Thecla decided to live in a cave for the next 72 years. Who could blame her? And then she traveled to Rome to be buried with Paul. That's the end of that story. Now you can go online and read the whole book if you Google Acts of Paul and Thecla. It is now online. There are many virgin martyrs over Christendom who actually took Thecla as their model. And in the Eastern Church, Thecla is venerated as, and I quote, an apostle and proto-martyr among women, and I also quote, an equal to the apostles. Today, she is the patron saint of computers, <laughs> if you can believe this, because Thecla actually means key, as in a keyboard, and that word is in Spanish. Thecla in Spanish means key. So cities are named for her in El Salvador, Wales, Canada, France, Italy, Portugal, and Germany. So if you haven't heard of her before, many other people have. And she's a favorite patron saint in Lebanon, which has 42 churches named after her throughout the country of Lebanon. A couple of years ago, I participated in a Jesus Seminar meeting where scholar Karen Torgerson spoke about the idea of gender, and her work was entitled Male Honor and Female Shame. She noted that in Roman culture, especially during this time, honor was the highest value of all, even more than wealth, okay? Honor, highest value. But the question of honor was attributed differently for men than women. Females were seen honorable if they were gentle, obedient, chaste, and modest. Men, on the other hand, were honorable if they showed courage, self-control, leadership, and domination. Now, we are a couple of millennium away from that ancient Roman culture, but we still see some carryover from those traits that are honorable, right, in our genders. When women show leadership potential in the system of ancient Rome, they're typically challenged, even today, not because of their character, but through their gender and their sexuality. Think about the apostles, Paul and Thecla. Paul is described in detail physically, all of which adds up to be a strong male leader. But the one thing we know about the physical attributes of Thecla is that she's a virgin. This Gnostic gospel is named for both Paul and Thecla, and both are venerated as leaders in the early church. But compare them. Paul is the leader because he is preaching, and Thecla is strong because of her virginity. Paul continues to preach and travel, and Thecla escapes death twice, and then retreats to monastic living to keep her virginity intact. For a woman in the ancient world, honor comes through her shame. Thecla is dragged naked 
to her death twice. Why? Because she dared to want to be a traveling disciple with Paul. Unfortunately, even today, many women leaders experience misogyny in the workplace, especially personal shaming. This is true for women clergy, as well as women in businesses. Who knew that there were ancient extra canonical texts with so much scandalous writing, better than harlequin novels and soap operas? So as we continue our series of The Way of the Other, we have acknowledged that all of us are others in some way, that we other people because of different reasons. Race, for example, like the Samaritan we talked about. Heritage, like the Moabites that we talked about. We other people because of their occupations, like Simon the Tanner that we talked about. We other people because of their religion, like Cornelius the Centurion. We other people because of their gender, like Thecla. So I want to leave you with this question. How are you othered? You have in your mind, how are you othered? And then, who do you other? That's your assignment for this week to think about. Because in God's world, none of us are an other. Amen.